What is up, ladies and gentlemen of the online jamly? This, of course, here's Jameric Fan 2000 with another monthly episode of the Quietcast Podcast, a Jameric White Podcast for the jamly by the jamly. This, of course, is another monthly episode of the Quietcast covering the month of April of 2022. Starting off this episode of the Quietcast for the month, I'm going to be looking at the latest news items that are about Jameric White and the band members of Jameric White. The following news items are updated as the date of the recording of this episode of the Quiecast for April 17th, 2022. Probably the most exciting news to come out about Jameer Kwai in the, in the vein of touring had came out at the early part of April of 2022 when it was announced that Jameer Kwai was announced to be headlining the newly created Andalusia Big Festival 2022 in the country of Spain near Mallorca between the weekend of September 8th through the 10th, 2022. It was confirmed by the band member uh, Rob Harris of Jamiroquai that Jamiroquai would be playing the second day of this new, newly created music festival in Spain on September 9th, 2022. The online digital queue for tickets for this upcoming highly anticipated festival date for Jamiroquai, and probably their only solo tour date for all of 2022, will be uh, apparently happening very, very soon, and general tickets for this uh, Andalusia Big Festival will be going on sale at the end of April of 2022. Stay in touch with uh, Jamir Fan 2000 on his social media, and be sure to keep your eyes on both the subreddits of the online Jamly, which would be R Jamir Kwai and R the Reddit Jamly, for further details on when the tickets for the Andalusia Big Festival 2022 go on sale. A new 34-track acid jazz Sony compilation featuring Jamir Kwai's White Knuckle Ride original mix, aka their demo, and of course the Automaton single Cloud9 were among a lot of various artists that just recently went up for pay download at Amazon.com. Uh, no news has been aware of this acid jazz Sony compilation would be making it to streaming platforms anytime soon. But if uh, any news comes out with this uh, new compilation coming out to streaming platforms, I'll be sure to pass it on on a future episode of the Jamiroquai Minute and many other Jamiroquai related videos on my YouTube and here on the Quiecast. After two years of patient waking, waiting by the online Jamly and for the fifth anniversary of his unfortunate passing this month of April of 2022, the long-awaited Toby Smith documentary that was debuted in February of 2020 uh, for his honorary Music for the Individual concert at his alma mater, Marble College, has finally been released on YouTube for all of the Jamly to check out. Be sure to check out both uploads of this great, amazing documentary uh, for Toby Smith uh, from the music of the individual concert that happened at Marvel's College from back in 2020 at both links provided on YouTube. JK of Jamiroquai currently emblazons the new Acid Jazz playlist cover on the Spotify music streaming platform playlist, so be sure to go over to Spotify and check out that playlist. And additionally, a new seasonal playlist entitled Pool Party Throwback Anthems, um, which is also a new official Spotify playlist featuring music of Jamiroquai, is also available on the music streaming platform for everyone to enjoy. Matt Johnson, the keyboardist of Jamiroquai, will have his own signature series electronic piano being made by the fine folks at Finish Vibe that will be coming out sometime in mid to late of 2022. Be sure to keep your eyes on the both of the subreddits of the GM online Jamly for further details on when this electronic piano for Matt Johnson's signature series will be released. The stand, in a bit of uh, YouTube uh, viewership uh, news, the standard version, which would be the old school upload of the classic 1996 Jamiroquai music video for Virtual Insanity is on the cusp of soon hitting over 200 million views on YouTube. Matt Johnson of Jamiroquai was recently, has recently released a new solo single entitled Place in My Heart, which uh, features uh, his wife Roki and, of course, a little bit of help from uh, Derek McKenzie of Jamiroquai on the drums. Uh, that new single from Matt Johnson, it's, of course, entitled Place in My Heart, will be releasing on streaming platforms on April 22nd, but you can check out the, new, the uh, Place in My Heart music video right now on YouTube. In, member, uh, in band members of the Jamley's uh, birthday news, uh, I'd like to wish a happy birthday to Jamaican White drummer Derek McKenzie and the amazing DJ uh, Derek McKenzie for her celebrating his birthday on March 28th of 2022. Happy birthday, Derek McKenzie. In a bit of uh, touring, uh, in a bit of uh, other band member touring news, in these next two two items, Matt Johnson, along with Derek McKenzie, Hazel Fernandez, and Valerie Ention of Jamiric Y will be headliners of the Wickham Jazz Festival on Sunday, June fifth, twenty twenty two. Tickets for this festival are currently available at wickhambeatscenter.com backslash events backslash Wickham Jazz Festival, or be sure to check down below in the description area of this episode of the Quietcast for further um, 
details on where you can get tickets for that festival. In addition, uh, it was also announced that Matt Johnson, along with Derek McKenzie, Valerie Antillon, and Hazel Fernandez of Jamiroquai, will be playing the Pizza Express Live in Holborn, UK on June 28th, 2022. In a a little bit of former Jamiroquai band member uh, remix news, a new remix featuring former Jamiroquai band members uh, Stuart Zender and DJ Desire um, did a cool new remix for a group called the Smug All-Stars and a song called Up Is Just A Place. The DJ Desire X Diversive Mix featuring Derek McKenzie X MWS. That new remix featuring those former two band members of Jamiroquai in a very funky song, very funky remix, I should say, of a great song is currently available on YouTube and all major streaming platforms. And in closing of this uh, latest news section of the QuietCast podcast, Matt Johnson did an extensive uh, uh, Insta Stories fan Q&A over on his respective Instagram account on March 19th, 2022. I, uh, I did... I did take the opportunity to save all of these queries to Matt Johnson from his Instagram store as a fan Q&A at a uh, Imgur album, which you can check out the link of down below. All links to all these news items for the QuietCast, this episode of the QuietCast podcast can be found down below in the description area of this episode of the QuietCast podcast on YouTube and, of course, over on Anchor FM. Coming up next, I'm going to be doing, uh, coming up next on this episode of the Quietcast, I should say, I'll be doing a little bit of a retrospective looking back at the fifth, the fifth anniversary of the unfortunate passing of Toby Smith and my uh, amazing opportunity I had in contributing to his uh, documentary, which, which I covered uh, up above in the latest news of this episode of the Quietcast. Hello there, Jamley. Um, as I preface in this episode of the Quietcast, uh, we finally saw, after nearly a two-year wait, the uh, release of the said uh, Toby Smith documentary uh, to coincide with the fifth anniversary of the unfortunate passing of Toby Smith back in April of uh, 2017 um, from complications of cancer. Um, to finally see that documentary finally released to the online Jamley on YouTube to check out when they could. And uh, like I said, this is the fifth anniversary of Toby Smith's passing and uh you know it, it back when when toby when the news of toby passing away hit the uh, online jam it really hit everybody hard and i was uh you know i was hit really hard by that news and i decided to actually put out one of the first people in the jam to put out a video to uh you know talk about what had happened and that everybody would grieve in their own time and uh you know, of course, other band members would put tributes out, you know, after that situation. But, uh, you know, five years on, you know, uh, Toby's uh, impact and his uh, his his, his uh, contribution to Jamiroquai is, is absolutely cornerstone. And uh, it's just really glad to see this documentary finally get out. Um, the uh, director of this documentary, a fine gentleman by the name of Matt, uh, actually uh, went around looking for people to contribute to this documentary back uh, prior to its release in February of 2020 for the Music of the Individual concert at uh, Toby Smith's uh, alma mater, Marlboro College. And I luckily had the opportunity to contribute lots of pictures and videos for this said documentary. But uh, that that documentary was played in companion of that concert um, for everybody that was in attendance. But uh, we were really waiting on permission from Toby Smith's family to be able to release this documentary so everybody in the online jam could check it out in their own time. But alas, uh, no answers came back, so we ended up waiting nearly two years and uh, Matt actually did a re-edit of that original documentary and uh, apparently got the approval of Toby Smith's family to release it in the month of April of uh, 2022 in for the fifth anniversary of his passing. And the documentary itself speaks for itself. It is an absolutely amazing documentary and uh, massive, massive props goes to Matt for his work on this documentary and just creating something very, very special that gives a bit of a, you know, a bit of a background on Toby Smith that Otherwise, other members of the jam we would never have known about, about how he was an amazing concert pianist and his amazing production works with many other artists um, from the Hoosiers to many, many others um, during his life. And um, a massive thank you to the family of Toby Smith for finally giving the uh, confirmation and the blessing to share this documentary for everybody on the online jam to check it out in your own time. And um, believe me, everyone in the jam will really love this. Um, I took the opportunity to pass this uh, documentary on to all the band members of Jamiroquai and slowly, uh, slowly um, reactions to this have started to come out. Uh, Derek McKenzie really did put up a lovely post on his uh, respected Instagram account 
promoting this amazing documentary of Toby Smith and sending props to uh, Matt on his work on this documentary and everybody should check it out in their own time. But as I said, this uh, documentary is uploaded two times on YouTube, one on my YouTube channel and one on Matt's YouTube channel. So if you'd like to check out this documentary for yourself, it's about 14 minutes long. It is absolutely a must-watch for everybody on the channel. Be sure to check out the links to those to the documentary uh, down in the description area of this episode of the Quiecast on on both this upload on my YouTube channel and of course over on Anchor FM. Coming up next, I'm going to be reading a, a recent interview with J.K. from Legacy of Music, which is a German website. Hello again, Jamly, and welcome to another little mini episode of Jamira Fan Reeves for the Uninitiated. This was a small series I started here on the Quiecast podcast in the past, uh, reading classic interviews with uh, JK and uh, other band members of Jamiroquai. And in this small episode of Jamira Fan Reeves, I'm going to be reading a recent interview that was uh, done with JK when he was uh, promoting the recent 25th anniversary reissue of Jamiroquai's 1996 album, Traveling Without Moving, with the legacy of music, a uh, German music website um and this interview is called jamiroquai's breakthrough the jk interview from legacyofmusic.com from back in january of 2022 and if you'd like to read this interview for yourself it is going to be available at legacyofmusic.com but i also have an english translation of this interview which from german to english that is available over on the reddit jamly subreddit so here we go after two albums, Jamiroquai beckoned in the pop music premier league. Singer and band leader JK forced that promotion in 1996 with the third album, Traveling Without Moving. Due to the 25th anniversary of that pivotal record, it will be re-released next month on Yellow Vinyl. Pop journalist Robert uh, Haskma spoke with Frenchman JK exclusively for Legacy of Music. In overviews of the 90s, it sometimes seems as if the 90s were a decade of the guitar. Between the violence of the grunge and the Britpop bands, however, there was also room for the exotic cocktail of funk, soul, jazz, dance, and pop as Jamiroquai mixed it. The band was founded in 1992 by Jason Luis Cheatham, a colorful frontman who came to, know, came to the world to know as J.K. The first albums, Emergency Planet Earth, 1993, and The Return of the Space Cowboy, 1994, sold well and earned the band much acclaim from the press, just as there was much praise for Jamiroquai's vibrant performances, where J.K., invariably dressed in a tracksuit and half hidden under one of those many special headwear, was always eccentric centerpiece. Still, the singer got the feeling that, that, got the feeling that more was possible. I realized I was at a crossroads. I had sold one and a half copy, million copies of the first two albums. Did I want to stay at that level, or was it time for the next big step forward? Things were, things were going very well in my own country, but I couldn't get a foothold in America, for example. The same sounds came from the record label. What do you want? Jump or stand still? I decided to take the plunge. What were the consequences of the decision? For example, I decided to dress a little less outrage outrageously, a little more stylized. I was more focused on the album, and I wrote most of the songs with Toby Smith, the keyboardist of Jamiroquai, in an apartment near Paddington that I shared with him. And I remember when... Um, that our neighbor, an elderly lady, would often come to complain about noise. While we were rarely made it, uh, while we rarely made it really late, because we were all quite civilized guys, the the first song we wrote was "Virtual Insanity." It was inspired by a visit to Japan. I had been walking around the city of Sendai in the winter. There was no one, no one to be seen on the street. When I asked an old woman where everyone was, she pointed to a staircase that led to a huge underground city. A surreal experience that, that resulted in that song. Initially, it just didn't get past the demo stage. I wanted the album to really be a unit. In order to be able to work as focused as possible, we recorded everything in a large, luxurious studio. The Linford Studio in Milton Keynes. What else inspired you to write? What else inspired you writing the songs? Cosmic Girl is about a young woman who crossed my path at one time. At the same time, it is a song in which my new approach could be heard clearly. Everything had to be more open and simple, intuitive. I stuck to the simple bass line. I was asked to write, a, uh, although it led to heated, discuss heated discussions with the rest of the group. Use the Force had a completely different background. I was asked to write a track for the Euro 96 football tournament. The most personal song was High Times, which is about my drug use at the time. Uh, it had made the sessions for the previous album, The Return of Space Cowboy, an absolute nightmare. This is just this was just my way of justifying myself for that. Was your record company happy with the result? Well, I can still remember the first time I played the album. 
I was convinced that we had some strong trump cards, especially with High Times and Cosmic Girl. However, the label thought otherwise. We don't hear a single. If I had and if I had anything else, then there was some reluctance. I crammed vir the Virtual Insanity demo into the tape deck. Everyone immediately jumped up. This is the song we've been waiting for, my a &R manager, Muff Woodwood, exclaimed in delight. This is a guaranteed hit. hit. We, we then recorded Virtual Insanity in the studio and added it to the album as the opening track. The whole, then the whole machine slowly started moving, especially when we shot the video for Virtual Sanity. I knew we had entered a new reality, bigger and better. It was horribly expensive video to make, by the way, and I think I'm still paying for that. And no, and no, that's not a joke. <laughs> Virtual Sanity was released as a single in August of 1996. The prediction of a &R manager Muff, the older brother of musician Steve Winwood, came true. It became a clear top 10 hit in several European countries. It also crept into several U.S. dance charts. A week and a half later, the traveling out movie was in the stories. The mission to take Jamiroquai to top band succeeded. Spacious. The album eventually sold more than 8 million copies, of which a significant part was in the previously unreached America. The traveling out movie has since been known as the best-selling funk album of all time. The record, would, the, the record went triple platinum, status in England while earning the band a record four MTV awards and a Grammy. In the Netherlands, it came in in 16th place in the album list. Recently, the video for Virtual Insanity was re-released in 4K, a higher resolution for many reactions on YouTube, for example. For example, it came to be concluded that much of the song and the album means to people. Do you ever read such messages? I have come. I have come. I have some kind of inner me defense mechanism that keeps me away from it. Ever since I was older and have kids, I'm more sensitive to what people write about me. Still, I occasionally turn on the computer. And sometimes I'm stuck by the cool stuff people write. I also find it fascinating to read that in read the interpretations of certain texts. J.K. wrote this song after his dog died. Oh yeah, <laughs> how do you look back at uh, how do you look back on traveling out moving? I recently listened to it a few times in a completely darkened room. I still thought it was a very good album. It's a sonic trip. It's a good flow. Every day, Digirama, Digital Vibrations, Spend a Lifetime, and all very nice songs. Relax. Great to put on after a night out. And I think everything sounds good. Open, a little rough. It was a production I wanted. It was also an album that was really really made at the time, in the heart of the 90s. Traveling Out Moving is also an album that defines Jamiroquai's event. What do you think about the re-release re of Traveling Without Moving? Excellent. You know what that's you know you know what's weird? This album we broke through with, but I don't feel like it ever got the credit it deserved. It was one of the best selling albums of the year. When it came out in the nineties, Britpop bands are almost always referred to as if Oasis and Blur were the only bands. The only thing and one uh, and one more thing, I am very proud of the fact that Jamiroquai has always developed always continued to develop. I won't I won't name names, but I when I hear records from those guys with such a Britpop pass, I often think you've been doing the same thing for years. You have never you, you you've never been repetitive. Sometimes I long for recognition for that because that's what I'm in the business for. <laughs> Occasional applause. What can we expect to you from the near future? I confess that the Corona crosses has really done has not done me any good. If nobody expects anything from, from you and you have nowhere to go, the temptation turns out to be very great to hang out on the couch with a glass of wine in your hand. Lately, however, I have found more and more um, found myself more and more in my home studio. I'm thinking about recording a very spontaneous live sounding jazz funk album. No computers, everything analog. So everything has to be re recorded if someone screwed up. It is very laborious, but it Co it, it come it provides the most spontaneity. Later this year, I'll be 52, so I want to go on the tour again soon. But I feel I but I feel too old for that. Traveling on movie will be re re reissued on yellow vinyl on December 10th, 17th via Sony Music, but irrevocably would end up being released later on in January of 2022 due to manufacturing issues. And later on, digital configurations will follow. And that was the article, uh, Jamiroquai's Breakthrough, the Jamiroquai interview by um, Robert Haska, um, um, Hagsma of the Legacy of Music website, which is a German music website. If you'd like to check out this uh, full interview for yourself, uh, I'll be sure to put a link to that interview down below, along with a link to the post on the Reddit Jamly subreddit of the English translation of that interview down in the description area of this episode of the Quiecast.
And that is it for this uh, monthly episode of the QuietCast podcast, the Jameer Quiet podcast for the Jamly by the Jamly. And I hope everyone enjoyed this episode of the QuietCast podcast. And as I said uh, back in the press of preface at the beginning of this episode of the QuietCast, all the links to everything discussed in this episode of the QuietCast for the month of April 2022 will be down below in the description area of this episode of the QuietCast podcast on its upload on my YouTube channel and, of course, on Anchor FM. Thank you again, everybody, for all the support, and I'll be sure to see you again really soon, hopefully with much more related, Jamiroquai-related content here on the QuietCast podcast. Bye-bye, everybody, and take care.